pleasant morning to all present here. Let us welcome the chief guest of our today's function, respected Mrs. Sushma Valentine, along with our honorable manager, Reverend Sister Maggie Vaz, our principal, Reverend Sister Monica Cardozo, the principal of Kanosa Pre-Primary Center, Reverend Sister Sheila D'Souza, our supervisor, Sir Neil De Costa, sisters, teachers, non-teaching staff, parents, and all my dear students. Today, we are gathered over here to celebrate our 73rd Republic Day. I wish you all a very happy Republic Day. Let us eyewitness this auspicious celebration. I request Master Manan Nahar to please come forward and recite the preamble of the Constitution. We, the people of India, having solemnly resolved to constitute India into a sovereign, socialist, secular, democratic, republic and to secure to all its citizens justice, social, economic and political, liberty of thought, expression, belief, faith and worship, equality of status and of opportunity and to promote among them all fraternity, assuring the dignity of the individual and the unity and integrity of the nation. In our Constituent Assembly, this 26th day of November 1949, do hereby adopt an act and give to ourselves this Constitution. I would like to call upon our Honorable Chief Guest, Mrs. Sushma Valentine, to hoist our national flag, symbol of our national pride and identity. School attention. Responsibilities 
that we have towards the nation. I call upon Mrs. Shahista to take the pledge. India is my country. India is my country. All Indians, All Indians are my brothers and sisters. Are my brothers and sisters. I love my country. I love my country. And I am proud of it. And I am proud of it. Rich and varied heritage. Rich and varied heritage. I shall always strive. I shall always strive to be worthy of it. To be worthy of it. I shall give my parents. I shall give my parents. Teachers. Teachers. And all elders. Respect, respect and treat everyone, and treat everyone with, courtesy. with courtesy to my country, to my country and, my and my people I pledge my devotion, pledge my devotion. in their well-being well and, prosperity alone, and prosperity alone lies my happiness. Mrs. Sushma is our ex-student. She completed her graduation and post-graduation in science. Her mastery in her subject is commendable. Her dedication and simplicity is noteworthy. Miss, we are honored to have you as our chief guest for today's function. I request the honorable manager, Sister Maggie Waz, to welcome Mrs. Sushma with a token of our love. I request Mrs. Nika, Mrs. Asmita, Sarajay and Mrs. Grace to lead us into the prayer. Almighty Father, we place in your hands all the Karuna warriors who are embodying sacrificial love in these challenging times, putting the welfare of others before their own, working to heal and restore people who are ill. Lord, be their guide, strength, wisdom, and hope. Renew their energy and sustain them. Bless them with patience and perseverance. Calmness in the midst of fear. Grace to overcome adversity. Protect them as they work with patience and give them victory in all that they do. Almighty God, bless India, our country, and make it true to the ideals of freedom, justice, and brotherhood for all. Sanctify our leaders with vision and courage to govern wisely in upholding our constitution and in uprooting corruption at all levels. May we be committed to tackle the serious ills of society in sincerely dealing with crime, caste-based politics, greed, pollution, exploitation of the weak and poor. Guard us from the threats and lead us to stability and security of our country within and across the border due to terrorism and insurgency. Make us aware of our heritage and our constitutional rights as well as our obligations and duties as citizens of our country. As the Bible says in Psalm 33, verse 10 and 11, The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generations. Lord, we know that in the midst of this time, you have kingdom purpose. You have brought our country to its knees. We pray for our leaders. Please grant them divine wisdom to lead this country. We are facing immense challenges regarding public health, pandemic, financial hardship, economic shutdowns, racial tensions, and great political division, among many other things. Our leaders face challenges and opportunities on the domestic and international frontiers. We pray for peace and love, and we are confident that you are implementing your plan and accomplishing your will. Jesus said, Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Heavenly Father, 
I pray to embrace in your loving arms all who are grieving the loss of family and loved ones through tragic circumstances where lives are in turmoil. Hope turns to despair and pain is all that's left. Be with them in their sorrow. Uphold them with your strength and through the generosity of love shown by others and your presence within their hearts. May they know they are not alone in their struggle. Give their weary heart rest and their mind peace. Lord, let they be comforted by the promise of heaven. We ask this in the precious name of you. Amen. because it is the day when modern India was born. We celebrate Republic Day on 26 January as the Constitution of India came into existence on this very day in 1950. This not only made us a Republic nation but also made the people of India the highest authority in the country. To know more about today's importance, I would like to call a student Ms. Gunjan Sanjay Patil from Standard 9 to deliver a short speech specifying the importance of the day. Identity. However, being Republican is our country's identity. A very pleasant and fraternal morning to our chief guest of the day, Mrs. Sushma Valentine, Sister Maggie Vaz, our manager, Sister Monica Cardozo, our principal, Sister Sheila D'Souza, the principal of pre-primary section, Sir Neil De Costa, our supervisor, and everybody present over here physically or virtually on the prosperous occasion of Republic Day. All the national festivals are very special for all the Indians, but during school days, their charm is different. Republic Day marks the celebration of the empowerment of Indian citizens to select their own government. On this day, the Constitution of India was adopted in 1950 after the country gained independence after 200 years from the British rule. 73 years ago, on this very day, we, the people of India, adopted, enacted and gave ourselves a unique constitution under the deanship of the legend Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. The Constitution of India is a huge work which lays down procedures powers, duties, fundamental rights and directive principles of government of India and Indian citizens like justice, liberty, equality and fraternity. A big salute to the architecture of this huge document Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar and all the leaders who took almost two years and 11 months to form the world's largest written constitution. We respectfully bow our hearts and heads to our hard-working farmers, courageous soldiers, selfless scientists and police officers, health warriors and to all the corona warriors who made every citizen of the nation feel proud. On this day, the President of India unfurls the national flag and addresses the nation. Prestigious awards will be given away to the martyrs and to the heroes who have dedicated their lives to protect the country at any cost. 
Although we have seen a lot of economic improvements and success as a country, we still have many hurdles in our path, such as poverty, unemployment, pollution, and the last two years, the health calamity of COVID-19. But in these 73 years, achievement in space and nuclear technology, expansion in general education, especially women education, especially women education, agricultural sector growth, industrial development, and digital world is really commendable. From space to farms, from educational institutions to the hospitals, we can see our growth in these 73 years. By decoding the coronavirus and developing the vaccine, our scientists had added a glorious chapter to the well-being of humanity. Our forefathers gave us Republic country, but would we be able to give our future generation a better pollution-free, racism-free country? So, let's take a pledge that we all will maintain peace and harmony and must remember the sacrifices of the freedom fighters. I would like to conclude my speech with Every citizen of India should now forget that he is a Rajput or a Sikh or a Jat. What he must remember is that he is an Indian. Jai Hind. Fir Tiranga Leheraega, Vishwa Gagan Parcha Jaega. Denge isko lok salami, ho jaegi, ho suhani. Yad karenge gauro gata, Ravi Takpar Pranakiata. Fir Hamne Samvidhan Banaya. Chabbi Janvari Kohe Apnaya. Chabbi Janvari Din Gauro Shari. Is din ki hai bat nirali, is din ki hai bat nirali. Friends, dance is an art and expression. What cannot be said can be expressed. So now, I call upon our talented students, Ms. Kanishka More, Ms. Gauri Pardeshi, Ms. Varnavi Patil and Ms. Blessi Vidayatil to present the dance performance. Every year, 
We celebrate this day on 26 January to mark the day on which our constitution came into effect in 1950. After this, our country truly became democratic and independent. This day brings together people of different caste, creed, color and background to celebrate the occasion with great fervor and enthusiasm. The beauty of our country is we have a different language and we also have conflicts and differences. But on this day, we all stand together as a united force. Today, we are all facing some common issues like fighting with the coronavirus, pollution, education hazards, corruption, unemployment, etc. Government has launched some schemes to solve these issues to a certain level. But we cannot fully depend on the shoulders of our government. We ourselves should be the first one to take the initiative to solve the problems. Take a step to make a better and stronger nation. The future of our country is in your hands. So I challenge you to take up the task of making our nation pollution free, corruption free, peaceful and a beautiful India. In the end, I would like to say, if you cannot do great things, do small things in a great way. And a quote of our late Prime Minister, Mr. Atal Bihari Vajpayee, let us together commence a journey of peace, harmony and progress. Jai Hind! After uncountable sacrifices of our freedom fighters, we got independence on 15th August 1947 and because of it only, we can gather and speak freely today. It is said that speech is the mirror of the soul. And now, I would like to request our dearest principal, Sister Monica, to please come on the stage and express her views and enlighten us. Good morning and happy Republic Day to all who are gathered here this morning to celebrate this important day. Republic Day in India is celebrated on 26 January every year to thank God for the gift of our longest written constitution and for the gift of all the people who were part of this constitution. We need to thank God Almighty for the wonderful gift Dr. Baba Sahib Bhimra Ambedkar who is the father of the constitution of India. Today is the day we celebrate Republic Day because the Constitution of India came into force on this day in 1950. Today is the day we need to reaffirm our commitment, unity in diversity. The Constitution is the supreme law of nation. The day 26 January was taken because to mark this day on the same day, that is on 26 January 1930, the Indian National Congress had declared the independence of India. The drafting committee presented a draft constitution to the President Dr. Rajendra Prasad on 26 November 1949 and then came into force on 26 January 1950. We usually remember all the freedom fighters only on two occasions, Republic Day and Independence Day. Young generation don't feel anything about it. We don't realize the importance of this great day. We at times tend to take people for granted who have worked for it, especially Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar. From where to where he reached, what hardship went through from his childhood just because he was belonging to the low caste. But out of him came the most important, precious and valuable documents. He never gave up in spite of caste discrimination. He was very intelligent, but he went through hardship at a very tender age. We experience and see in this world, it's always one person who has made a difference. One Mahatma Gandhi, 
one Dr. Babasaheb Ambedkar, one Saint Magdalene, one Mother Teresa, one Sindhu Thai, one Saint Bakita, one Jesus who made a difference in this broken world. It is our turn to be that one to make a difference in this broken and sick world with COVID-19. Let us not follow the crowd. That way may lead us nowhere. You need to be the change you want to see in this world, says Mahatma Gandhi. To bring about a change, we need to see the things what others don't see and to do things what others have never done before. That's what exactly our dedicated leaders did and died for their beloved country. We may not find those leaders today who can make a difference. The minute you follow the crowd, you lose your identity. Be you, and then you will be able to make a difference in the society. Let people say to you, I am because of you. The day you hear those words, then you know you have lived your life to the full with a difference. Dare to be different. That's what Dr. Ambedkar did and other leaders. Every day there is a clearing call to do something different, to be different with a difference. We at times are more interested in wearing the tricolor clothes and having a one day off. Instead of that, do something in your life that will make a difference in your life and in the lives of others. Let us whisper a prayer for all our present political leaders that they may be a committed person who will work for the betterment of our country. We find so difficult to find committed people in this broken world. Let us become persons of commitment and persons of prayer. Happy Republic Day to all of us. Thank you. God bless you.